but welcome to the W3C Open Active Community Group Hangout for December the 7th, 2022. And today, uh, or final reminder, or another reminder, if you haven't already, please join the W3C Community Group via the link there. So today, quick update on the data quality reporting framework. Uh, some of the work that myself and Chris predominantly have been working on. And we'll show some example draft data quality metrics that I've been knocking about. And I'll talk about how I uh, created a data set to, to measure those. And then we'll have a quick chat about the activity list if we've got time at the end. So I shall move straight on. Oh, and before we do that, of course, I can just... Um, yeah. Howard and Chris from the ODI, Nick and Dominic Fennell from IMIN, Ollie from London Sport, Stephen Winfield, and Nathan Solder. So the idea, um, we, we had <clears throat> a visit from the Office of National Statistics Data Quality Hub, and they talked about the data quality action planning process. And our approach, was informed by that plan, which basically you start with the purpose of the data, you consider what you need from that data, which fields and variables are critical, and you decide what good quality looks like in, in, in the case of those variables, develop some measures that you can report on a regular basis, and you use those to drive actions to improve data quality in ways that are gonna support that purpose. So, that's what we're looking at. Repeatable measurements tied to the purpose um, that allow the publishers or providers, data creators, to, um, to understand where issues may arise and to tackle them up front. So, and the use case we're, oh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the, the purpose or the use case that we're focusing on immediately is discovery. And although in time, Similar approach will be extended to other use cases. So um, this is a, a diagram that um, ONS left us. The idea is that each one of these might be a data quality metric, and it shows that while the data might be perfectly suited for, for one use case or one purpose or another, it may be less suited for other use cases. So part of the, uh, the drive this phase of Open Active is to explore new use cases, additional use cases. So this is going to be a useful tool for that as well. Um, and this is a allows for a better discussion around data quality than just simply saying it's good or bad data. It depends obviously on what you're trying to do with it. So this is a way to kind of quantify that. Um, we're focusing on discovery. We have spoken over a couple of weeks around which elements in the data are essential for that use case. And we, we, you know, I often call on Ollie to do a, a demo of his activity finder, you know, the London Sport Activity Finder. That's an example of the user experience we're trying to enhance and make it as easy as possible for someone to find something that's of interest and work out if it's for them and get it booked. So that's the kind of purpose and, and experience that we're looking for. Um, Nick shared from some of the work with MCR Active and other implementations recently, um, a set a spreadsheet was listed a set of fields, a much smaller set than the whole um, Open Active specifications allow. So these are the kind of core fields. And Chris has done a little bit of work on that um, to kind of hone that down further for a set of fields for me to then go away and try and um, create some draft measures. So that's what we're, we're going to look at today. I only have um, a few to show you, so it, it shouldn't take too long, but um, hopefully it'll prompt some, some thoughts and some questions. Um, so, but first I'll just explain how I created the data set um, that I'm then going to measure the data quality on. So we start off with one catalog of catalogs, um, which links to four individual catalogs which links to 112 data set site pages. And each of those contain the, the um, API endpoints. So I think I listed 276. So for me, measuring open active data, this is the route I would take. Um, if it's not listed in the catalog, 
how am I going to find it? How is any of our users going to find it? So that to me is uh, is an important step. We need to make sure that things are getting getting listed there. Um, of those 276 API endpoints, only 222 were returned in data when I when I ran this ran this a week and a so ago. Um, it's the paged data, of course. So we collect about six six and a half thousand um, pages of JSON data returned from each of those from from all the sites. And if you unpack all that, you get about two over two million records. Some of which, of course, are deleted and out of date. So by the time you sort and filter the data to just the, the live or current or open active records, you get about a million and a half. So that's the data set I'm going, I'm taking into the data quality um, monitoring. Um, and I just thought, well, I'll start with just a quick count, look at the variation in some of these things, what type of records are coming through. Um, and instantly my data quality spider sensors were tingling when I see things like a capital E event and then an, you know, a normal E event. Um, and it feels like those should be merged. And if you look again, there are some others there that, that you have sessions with an uppercase and without. Is a scheduled session the same as a session? So if someone come in to open active data, you know, relatively new, um, there's a lot of variation, a lot of things to pick. And, and these kind of measures, um, it, it raises a lot of questions. These are all cost challenges that someone implementing um, a tool or a service using open active data would have to have to solve. So it's interesting. To, to observe. Uh, oh, and this is just a kind of a final page from those stats that I was exploring. So these were, um, I'd been asked by Spot England, you know, how many publishers we got out there, how many, um, because in some slides I'd, I'd been presenting, it says we started with eight early adopters way back in 2016 or whatever, and now we had over 100 organizations. But if you look in the data, we're presenting data from over um, 6,000 named organizers, activity providers, course leaders, clubs, leagues, etc. Um, and there may be more because sometimes the data super event um, in the in some of the data feeds didn't unpack. So, so um, there's still a couple of things to explore there. Over 1800 um, organizers or course providers um, only have one entry, one session or one slot. Um, so I guess we these are the that shows that we've got things like the London open sessions tool and, and other tools to help the kind of grassroots providers list their data. They're um, you know they're being used and there's there's quite a lot of data in there from those smaller providers. I'll move on now. So this was uh, I say exploring the data. Um, someone new to Open Active, when you see these things, it, it prompts a lot of questions. Now, different kinds. So I'd claimed, cleansed up those um, sessions and crudely kind of put, mushed them together for, for the purpose of this quick exploration. Um, so obviously with different kinds of data, you'd expect to see different patterns. So on-demand events, it's no surprise that there's no postcodes. Um, you know. um, but things like the, the low completion for events, there's low completion in activity. Um, that surprised me. Until in speaking to, to Nick, I learned that uh, originally the event was the first set of opportunities published. So this will include a lot of older feeds. Um, but if you imagine you're trying to bring all that data together in Activity Finder, if the activity name is missing, um, that's one of those core critical fields that's going to impact the experience. So it's just interesting to see. Um, and the, the newer, the yellow highlighted fields there are the, the newer one. So perhaps there's, there's some stuff to, to explore and unpick and discover there, discuss. Um, so if I just explain each type of data, for each type of, it, of data, I try to find the activity name in the data feeds. And sometimes, of course, it's, it's, it's named different things. And I 
this is a count of how many were, were complete, how many I was able to find. So not null, not missing, not blank. Um, so that is a 58%, 58.2% completeness for events of activity. I should have explained that at the start, sorry. It doesn't say percentage anywhere there. Tut tut. Well, I'll just, I've spoken for a while there. I'll just pause for a moment, and um, if anyone has any comments or thoughts, Steve, Stephen's first day. No, sorry, Howard. I was waving to somebody walking past the office. <laughs> just, <laughs> apologies. Apologies. No problem. No problem. Uh, but I can, see, I can see why you thought I had a question. Um, all interesting stuff. I can just make a statement. Interesting stuff. Um, and and it'd be interesting to, um, um, if you just go back to the previous slide, sorry, if you don't mind, uh, no, sorry, maybe it was one before. one before that, perhaps, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah there, there was, it was just, sorry, so go back to the last one, sorry, beg your pardon, I'm just... Was it this back one? And forwards. Uh, no, it's the one where there was, incom yeah, there were incomplete data, perhaps it's the last one that you, uh, you, you, you landed oh, okay. on, so um, apologies. But it'd be interesting to understand, um, from my perspective, I, I uh, GNL just complete the data fields that have, been, that have been enabled for us to be completed um, as part of our open active settings by OpenPlay. Um, and as far as we're concerned, we've completed them as fully as we can. Um, but, but interesting, I noticed that some of these, the last column URL, for example, we don't put a URL in every single activity type um, uh, or every, every activity schedule. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, so why, why haven't we done that? Well, one, because we don't use it. Therefore, it's not beneficial for GLL because it doesn't deliver any benefit for us from our open play um, perspective. But of course, from an open data perspective, it's actually quite important. And, and perhaps some of those other data fields are, are fields that we perhaps overlooked because they're not necessarily relevant to us, but they would be to a consumer of the data like London Sport or anybody else or any of the other, um, any of the brokers out there, perhaps. So that was just just my comment. Yeah, I think just uh, for an example, we don't always publish a postcode, but we do always publish a longitude latitude coordinates. That yeah, that is helpful. Um, I'll I'll just speak, speak to that briefly. So um, I say it's a it's the first exploration, and and for me, you know, who, what, where, when, why. What is the activity, the where of it? Um, and from either of those things, I guess the postcode or the, the coordinates, you can you can get a pretty you can get to the other quite easily. So um, so I think that's this needs to be expanded to include um, a broader measure of location. Um, I think maybe there is something else about region or um, you know, a kind of locality, a, a higher level of geography that's useful for search or, or things. I, I guess that, that needs to be explored with the, uh, the implementers. Do people use a geospatial search around the coordinates, you know, in, in an activity finder? Um, I'd have to understand the, the flow about that a bit, be a bit better. Um, but I think- Yeah, just so on that, sorry. Um, yeah. Just to give you a very quick answer to that. We and I believe Pitch Booking and a couple of others use geospatial search. So I imagine the postcode's probably mapped to a long lat and then it's done as distance from a coordinate. Yeah, okay. Um, so, and to go back to yours, Stephen, um, obviously, really interesting. As I say, there's no driver. For, for you to add a field that has no value internally, but um, yeah, for uh, in the open data world, that is significant. Uh, does anyone say any more about how URLs are used? I think I agree with Stephen and that URLs are very important. I can definitely see cases where a booking system might not necessarily have an online way to view an event or course if it's just simply like an integrated booking system. Um, and perhaps it's all managed manually, for example. Um, 
So I think your role is probably excusable to miss. Um, because otherwise, if you try to enforce it too much, you'll end up with a lot of data with the same URL. And I imagine the idea behind the URL is so that you can actually go somewhere and book, whereas that might not always be possible. Um... Yeah, I think I agree with that. If it's helpful, <clears throat> if it's helpful within the GLL data set, the URL is the deep link URL for play, for play open play for flow um and so that's uh that's automatically i think automatically populated as the deep link uh in many cases so that's the kind of idea i think what they've been saying absolutely agree with uh some systems you can't deep link and when you can't deep link you'll just have one url that just sends you to the sometimes in some cases it's the home page you know and you've got to find you got to go on your own discovery journey um arguably better than nothing if you were going to have to go somewhere um rather than just kind of google to figure out where the where the session is um i believe url is currently a required field um which links back to our previous conversations one of the few required fields um that will probably be coming across here Um, so, you know, standing out from it, from this table for me, looking at the highlighted rows, these are the newer things that um, we have relatively low completion on that session in, for activity information and postcode. I wonder. That's been very low, doesn't it? That there's um only fifteen percent have the activity name and you know less than one percent have the location for a session. So perhaps I need to dig into that a bit more. But I suppose going um going back to, to your comments, Stephen, it, it's it's possible to get similar set of figures for each feed. Um, you know, I just didn't want, want to start sharing those in this kind of open setting, but uh, happy to, to you know, explore those with, with individuals if they like, if they want to get in touch. That's, that's or well, we can think of a, a good way to share that kind of more detailed information. Yeah, I was just I was just keen to understand when it said URL, because Nick's right in, in the open place system for flow, it automatically generates a, a URL um, for which is Nick, as Nick said, is a deep linking. Um, for bookings um, but we also have other urls that we set in like video url but we don't do that for every 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 location and i think there might be a couple more as well that that uh, might have been requirement for manchester but we haven't done for, for everywhere else as an example so therefore you might get inconsistent data from us you might get everything you need for manchester but you won't get everything you needed for camden for example well uh, well in, in which case that, that these measures Still have value then because it shows you know, if that was deemed a, a necessary field for the experience in Manchester, then that kind of might be the ideal that we're we're working towards in time, um, and being able to report how far off we are that you know how far off that we are is um, that's the kind of the point of the, the these measures. What I, I was working on, uh, doesn't seem to have appeared in the slides, was something around uniqueness as well. Um, so I was seeing that um, some of these fields, let me see how I find it, sorry. No, I can't find those, so I won't, I won't go on that. Um, so alongside this, I don't 
let's see if we've got the uh, all of the fields that I was going to explore in this way. Do you have that one? Handy, the one um, linked in the document. Sorry, you cut out. Were you talking to me, Howard? Sorry. Yeah. Do you have the list of, of fields that I was going to work through? Yeah, I, I just took a handful of them here. Um, yeah. You can just paste that into the chat. That'd be great. Is that the list that we put on that document, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, all right. In the chat now. Um, so the, the proposal is to explore completeness, uniqueness, the timeliness, uh, where, where we're talking about start dates. We want to make sure that we're talking about um, the, uh, talking about events and opportunities that are current now and not, not historic. So that list of um, is there anyone got any comments around which they wouldn't expect to be completed? We've, we've talked about URL in some cases. And when you say you just put um, a latitude and longitude, are all of the other fields left blank? It depends what information we have. Right. So if we don't have the postcode, we won't provide it. Nathan, just on that, with regards to the postcode, so you know um, you just said there that if you don't have it, but wouldn't it have already been, I don't know if this is the right, I'm trying to find the right word, but like already uploaded into the system already before you start pulling it through? Would it, is it available or not by providers in some cases? Yeah, so in like most of cases, um, like our venues will have postcodes attached. Um, but there could be instances where um, the actual facility or the location of the event is in a different location. And in those cases, it might not have a postcode because they might have just set a different location, like using a what three words address or something like that. Okay, right. So there is a potential there to remap it back to a postcode by doing a reverse lookup on the, on the geo coordinates. But um, when you've already got geo coordinates, it, it doesn't really seem like a um a particularly useful thing to do yeah and those reverse mappings are hairy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no the, the only reason i ask is um I'm, and whether i'm looking at the right thing or not but i'm looking at the the opportunity spec and i'm looking at the addresses and street address address locality address region postal code and address country are all required fields so hence the reason why I've I've sort of put them in the list there. I've kind of looked at this spec. I've looked at the, as I said, the spreadsheet that Howard mentioned that Nick sent over. Um, and that's the reason why that's kind of in there. But if some postcodes don't come through, is that because they're sort of slipping through the system without a postcode or is it they are definitely coming through with postcodes? Sorry, I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly. I'm trying to, I think I'm getting myself confused now, but it's just, I'm trying to understand why if it's a required field, why sometimes you wouldn't have it. Right, I see what you mean. Um, I was under the impression that the required field for an event is a location rather than an address. Uh, there's a GitHub issue relating to this that I'm just trying to find to paste in <laughs> that will shed light on this, this whole conversation about addresses, uh, which I thought would helpfully be named something involving the words address and required, but <laughs> uh, give me a sec. I'll, I'll I'll paste it in. Basically, this is a this is a point. Of, ah, there we go. Ah, I've got it. I've got it. It's a point of uh, of previous contention around ad hoc load, ad hoc uh, venues uh, and uh, events. Uh, sorry, ad hoc ad hoc events um, and sessions, not venues. Um, and the reason for that is that um, uh, an ad hoc an ad hoc event like a cycling session, for example, might start from the street corner, you know, or, or you know, where where Warwick Way crosses Foxhall Bridge Road or something. Um, and um, if that is where you want people to meet, that's that's legitimately not a postcode. Um, 
And so some data, especially running, cycling, those kind of activities where you're literally meeting outside at a point, often the pub or something or outside this this, this venue, but when, when it is literally a point on the map, um, there was uh, a challenge there. And, and we kind of said to the data providers at the time, can you provide this information to make it required? They were like, it doesn't really make sense to do that. Uh, and therefore, hence the, the conversation. And so there was this kind of idea that um, if only postcode and geos provided, the meeting point must be specified. And also that when uh, postcode is recommended rather than required, unless geos provided. So basically the, the, the rule being, the proposed rule being, and this is going back to 2020 now, but the proposed rule being um, that the, if the postcode is not specified, we must have geo coordinates. If the geo coordinates are not specified, we must have a postcode because you need to be able to put the thing on a map somehow, either yeah. one of those things. Um, the preference being for geo coordinates because you don't need to do a lookup. Um, and that data quality measure is something that we've been pushing on since 2018, I think. Everything should, I think the first version of the data page even had does it include geo coordinates because um, doing a lookup from postcode to geo is expensive and a burden on the data consumers. So better to have geo and sometimes inaccurate as well. So better to have geo in there if we can, if that's helpful. It's very, I think we zoomed right in there on one specific <laughs> uh, issue, but yeah, that's why that is like that. So in terms then of postcode for event, that wouldn't be a good measurement then to have in terms of completeness because there may be instances that it wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't have to postcode for it, like for the examples you gave. And, you know, it'd be a lot, you know, for running events and for, you know, yeah, any any kind of those events where you, you know, I did one back in July where I started on a beach. I'm not going to have a postcode, <laughs> you know, for this particular grain of sand that I started on. Um, so I get that. So in terms then of having postcode as a measurement for event, it shouldn't be that. It should be more for the location that's provided, yeah? Yeah. I think... Okay. But that, that's good. I think in terms of a measure, um, and I, you know, I suggested this before that it should be postcode or longitude and latitude coordinates. Like uh, as Nick says, that's the rule, the business rule that's been decided. So if you consider either of those things, we should be at hundred uh, percent. And currently, I'm not. So that that can be um, that, you know that's a, a simple refinement and and one um, that's you know this is precisely the kind of honing in on what the right things to measure are. Um, and, that's a, and, that, and that's a really good example there, um, Howard, of something that should be required. I mean, it shouldn't be passing the validator if one of those two things isn't present. And so it's a good thing to uncover how something has come to be in data that doesn't have one of those two things and, and, and where that's coming from. I mean, there shouldn't be any any publisher publishing that, but, but, but maybe there are and they're, you know, what on earth are they flying in the air presumably yeah. well we can this at this last this height <laughs> by you know by um looking at the the feed level api level um version of this table we can we can hone in on, on what it is we may discover that it's how i've taken these you know very varied streams and tried to fill them up in pot. um it might be that um <laughs> Can, can I can I just Howard? Can I just um, make a comment to Nick there? Um, Nick, I'm just looking at um, our, our settings now for facilities and activity templates and templates. And actually, I can't find anywhere that I have the ability to specify that degree of granularity for an activity that might be taking place at a venue or facility, a leisure centre where they're organizing a running event that doesn't actually start in the leisure center, but starts somewhere else that might be close, but not actually within the postcode vicinity of that, that, uh, that facility. Yeah, that's right. I can't, see, I can't see any, yeah, I can't see anywhere, but was that but, specified yeah. as, as, a, as for an activity that you need to be able to potentially configure that activity as having its own specific geolo coordinates or yeah geolo coordinates rather than postcode right 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 so okay so that yes so, so there's 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 kind of two separate things there's the, the specs including all possible scenarios and use cases and then there's a booking system that implements 
uh, a subset of the specification according to the particular use case. So for the leisure operator, the booking system only implements things that leisure operators are likely to want to do is the idea. So they wouldn't necessarily have the capability in the leisure operator system to start a running event that isn't in the venue that, that they're operating. Um, now you might say, we do that, in which case, interesting, we should add that as a feature, <laughs> but don't tell Sam that yet. <laughs> but but, um, but that's certainly the way that this is, um, you know, the, the idea behind implementation across systems is that in, a, in for example, the Run Together platform, which is for um, England Athletics to organize running events, they've got a very specific set of things that they include in there um, and it's geared in that way. And so you wouldn't be able to, for example, set up a squash court in that booking system because it's obviously for runners and therefore squash courts don't make sense in that context. And so it's, it's that type of idea of there's the standards that cover all these use cases and um, rules around those things. And then sometimes you can't do something in one booking system, like organize a squash court in the running system because the, the system is targeted at a different audience. And that's kind of by design because otherwise if all systems had to implement all the things, then the cost is enormous um, to do all of that. So there's some, some decisions that be made along the line. But I don't know if that's specifically for you, Stephen, this, do, do, do you start running groups outside? <laughs> You're gonna say yeah. Yeah, there, 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 will be, there will be types of activities that we run that won't necessarily be at the postcode of the facility where it's being organized by. And I use the Excellent. word not from because, you know, because we could be running things in the park that might be yes. near to the laser center, but, you know, you've taken a group outside to do something specifically. Um, I don't do, think there'll be many usually, examples of that, but they're all uh, done. Do, and do they meet in the park, not in the center, and then go to the park? Yeah, in some, in some instances they will, yeah. 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 Interesting. Funnily enough, Legend has that capability. Which is so, for example, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, interesting. Well, don't mention that, but but interesting. In one of our laser centres <laughs> up in up in Cumbria, we we run um, uh, from the laser centre itself. They run. They have a little satellite location where they run uh, group exercise classes, but it's like forty miles away um, wow. because it's it's like, that's absolutely remote. Now we set it up as a different resource of the same location, but I'm just thinking this might be an example where you'd need to put the, the coordinates for that particular. Um, a particular sort of uh, resource that is a long way away from the venue. Yeah, that that could be an example. For example. Yeah, yeah. It's like that sounds like it's at the resource level within Flow, as you say, and and, and Le yeah. Legend does does do that. But certainly, I don't know if Flow does that, and that's really interesting because certainly at the moment mm -hmm. that data would come yeah. through with with a postcode on uh, the the center, as you say, and and yeah, and that's, it would that's right, yeah. On the map, yeah. it would say there, not not forty miles away. Yeah. 40, forty miles yeah. away. Quite yeah, a long it way. is Cumbria. Cumbria is, you know, you got Shap over one side where there's nothing, and you've got, you know, somewhere else uh, up the Eden Valley. So it, it's it's quite a few examples it, it, up in there. It's, it's far happens. enough away. Yeah, it's far enough away to be marginally frustrating, isn't it? If you went to the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we're into. Um, another metric there of accuracy, you know, the postcode and the data is, is that, is it accurate as the place to start? But that's notoriously difficult to measure. Um, but it, as it's, it's measured by that frustration in your end users, if they, if they just go over there in the wrong place. So, um, that's, that's a separate, a separate challenge. Um, I think in, in, in how to explore that further. So I'll, Nick, I might pick up with you on that, um, you know, if that constitutes a, a stream of activity or... Yeah, and, and certainly um, Stephen, for this immediate issue, I'll, I'll raise on the data on the issues log for flow for the far future, but that's, that's a thing to think about just so that it doesn't get lost, but obviously don't feel like you need to do anything with that, with that note in any, any immediacy, but it sounds like it's worth well, capturing do, do you agree? I'll, I'll need to do some lobbying first. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I, I copied that list into a, into a slide in the deck, so it will be there for if anyone goes back for future reference. But it hasn't it hasn't appeared in my presentation, I think. So um, if anyone's 
if does anyone have anything further to say around, around you know inspired by the this kind of ideas of completeness and uniqueness and timeliness of those fields that I've I've shown there? We've we've suggested that they're not all needed uh, and that postcode and or um, lat long will will do for the location for the wear of things. Is there anything else stands out? Or we can move on to talk about the activity list. What what's the purpose of the list? Sorry, I mean maybe wider context here. Is this is this forming the data quality framework? Is this the short list for the data quality framework this, itself? Or it is, yeah. So these are the kind of candidate fields that I will do a fuller set of metrics around completeness, uniqueness, and all those kind of things for us to to uh, kind of drill in further on on what are the real things that are they're actually going to drive a better experience if we get right it, it might be a, just oh sorry. no 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 please um just just apologies if i've kind of missed missed some of this but is the uniqueness in rel uh, reference to urls particularly um yeah um and predominantly urls but um yeah I guess. Um... Yeah, because that, I, I, that was what I was going to comment on is essentially, um, a lot, yeah, these fields are, are, are all kind of important and, and agreed that we need to be required, but URL required has the nuance of it actually being a relevant URL and is a little bit harder to measure, but uniqueness of that URL would, I guess, be a metric to to see because yeah we're having a few issues in this department at the moment where urls are just going to generic home pages and just aren't useful for users um and so yeah it's it's a little bit of a trickier one for us to have visibility on so that and that's a proxy really isn't it, it we we think that a unique url is a, a deep link as is nick's term you know so that goes right to the booking page um, for that specific slot or, or session and not everybody can provide that you know so that, that's that's the world we're in at the minute but if we measure measure yeah. that capability that's you know that shows how we're, we're moving forward in that department nice um and and the one thing that isn't on there we, we is image you know an image for the activity and then that's something that's been um mentioned in the past as a really adds value to the uh, user experience and activity finders. Um, I don't know, any thoughts on that? It's probably, it's probably something we, we can report on. Um, well, it's useful, but I wouldn't say it's essential. There's ways of augmenting it for end users, um, but yeah, I, it, I, it's obviously prepared. I feel like with images, um, again, I agree it's useful, but it does come with its own particular set of quality problems. Can you give an example? Uh, so an example would be um, there's going to be no standardization about aspect ratio. Yeah. So trying to display images with an abstract aspect ratio, not even sure if it's going to be a portrait or landscape is quite complicated. And yeah. then you've got resolution and just image size. So if you're doing some kind of processing and putting it into a single frame, you might have problems where the image is only about 20 by 20 pixels because they've uploaded an icon or something. Yeah. And then you might have some where it's actually a 4K image that they took from them, like a DSLR or something. So yeah, you've That's got the... like a, just a huge scale of, of different issues with images. That's helpful. Really good. Um... You, uniqueness is maybe a measure there as well because there's um you'll see providers um provide images but they're just generic brat light logos or yeah. um kind of organization images opposed to specific image specific yeah yeah so for example on playfinder if we don't have proper photographs for a venue we do have kind of default uh representative images of each type of sport um so quite a lot of our venues will have the same photographer 
Okay, look at that. We, we will move on. Um, so thank you very much. Or I'll just wrap up with next steps on that. So I'll I'll take the list and those those comments and thoughts, and again do a, a, another iteration, um, honing in on on some some example measures. I'll share those probably um, by email or you know by the uh, the Slack channel. Um, and comments, comments welcome. In terms of the, the reporting framework, we're drafting a paper, Chris has been working on that. And so we'll, um, which just explains the process we've, we've gone through, uh, why we're doing it, and it'll have some, some metrics at the end and that'll be shared for comment as well. Um, okay. So it might be worth, um, it, Howard, it might be worth also sharing to this initial list that you've put together, a short list with the W3C mailing list um, and um, there might be considerations from, for example, I know Sports England has done some behavioral change research into what fields like images, for example, are a thing uh, from their perspective that, that are helpful, whether it's worth taking that angle as well. And also um, not to put Dom on the spot because I know he's on the school, but I'm sure some of the IMINS customers have got a view on what fields they find important um, that would probably be useful to feed into this. Um, so whether it's worth sharing that so that we can make sure that we've you know included all the thoughts I don't know. Uh, but just a well that's we definitely do want to include all the thoughts um i will be sharing this directly with sport england in our kind of regular catch-ups that we have with them but um yeah we can we'll, we'll cast the net wide um okay so i'll try and move on um so yeah, in the in the Slack channel, I mentioned the activity list, um, and I just wondered if we could have a few minutes. Um, people's experiences, uh, any challenges, and any thoughts. I'll give you a sneak preview, in fact, before we get to that, which is, um, I wonder if it's an opportunity to use broaden the use of the, of the activity list and an opportunity to use it to raise awareness of open active. So, for example, we've got lots of missing descriptions. Um, and if that's for a sport or activity that has a national governing body, we can um, engage them, try and get them to contribute descriptions, uh, raise awareness of open active, this activity list, and the other uh, elements of the standard, see where they are on their journey to publication, uh, to sharing open data. But also a big, you know, big push in this phase is to move from data fragmentation to data standardization in the sector. That's the, the catchphrase. So, um, and that can mean, you know, it, this is a good example, I think, because everywhere you look, everyone's got their own version of an activity list. So it feels like it's an opportunity to do more, uh, to you know, create some reference data for the sector. We're in a good position in that we're trying to create um, you know, open standards for data uh, for the sector. Is it, is it something that open active, the initiative should, should seize and kind of use? So uh, for example, there are other funding bodies in, within Sport England, other bodies funded by Sport England that are creating their own activity lists. Some of them are derived from ours, um, but I just wonder if, if people had thoughts on that. And that, that section there at the bottom. So we have Sport England, uh, if we were all using the same code for a type of activity, we'd be able to draw that line between the money that's been invested into it by Sport England. The open data would give us information on how that money funding translates into opportunities. We've got the Active Live Survey and uh, Four Global are doing some work, uh, Turnstile Data, I think it's called, where they, they're mapping participation in those activities. And ultimately, we, you know, we, we'd see, hopefully be able to understand the kind of health impacts, which is where we're, we're trying to get to the health outcomes. So if we were using a standard set of reference data, we'd be able to have a much fuller um, understanding and appreciation of, of, that, of that value chain. So my questions are, what about the activity list? Do as everyone have any ideas or thoughts about that? Uh, and while we're on, I'll just put the, oops. Personally, I think it um, does a pretty good job from 
whenever we've interacted with it, it's pretty complete. Um, I think the process of adding things to it is not not easy enough. It takes too long, and usually when you need to add something to it, it's quite a thing that needs to be done immediately. And in the past, that's caused quite some friction points. Um, but generally speaking, I think the completeness of it is is actually pretty good. And we will have scenarios in which within our platform, people will add activities and we've not had any that have not been on there, for example, the, like some edge cases. Um, but yeah, I think generally speaking, um, it's not often that there aren't, aren't matches. Okay, so it's like a process for, for adding things. And I think um, Dominic, I mean, I think had some, um, you know, they've got that, that situation again, I think where a client wants to, can't find their exercise in the list and they want to add one. So we're, we're interested in how we can speed up that process. I think my thought was the, um, currently it's managed separately to the other elements of the of the standard so um there's an activity list committee which i don't think has met recently for a while um and the process seems a little bit disjointed or away from from this group so i was interested in views around whether we bring the kind of review or approval of, of changes to that to that list to this group or a, a subset of this group um, with a view to trying to make it a more timely um, process, but also with a view to trying to broaden its appeal and use elsewhere. Can, can you see the activity list on my screen now, by the way? I've just been scrolling through it. Or can you still see slides? No, I saw the list when you had it up. Yeah, no, we can. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I think, I think uh, the activity list. Well, so I, I guess I can speak to the the intention behind the separation, which might be helpful to think about whether we want to keep it or not. Um, at least in theory, the group of people that sit in this forum, talking about kind of medium to long term standard stuff, and those things go into kind of a you know the 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 backlog to implement maybe through beta and then eventually into the specification documents and so there's a kind of long process like the issue we shared a minute ago which was started in 2020 and there's been back and forth on it so there's it's kind of the purpose there being to kind of slowly shape um the the, the standards and there's implications every time we make, we make changes to the standards and cost for things and for people um the activity list in theory, should be fairly swiftly changing in, in, in respect to things that are missing or that can be added. Um, it should potentially, well, hopefully be a group of people that's representative of the different activities that the list is about. So whereas this is this group is much broader concerns. Um, and from my understanding of previous, um, Dom has actually been on the, on the committee, was I think is on the committee, um, those you say hasn't met for a while um but there are quite a few kind of back and forth in there quite it's quite a detailed conversation around whether activity should be in or not um based on you know wh whether they whether they should qualify as an activity or whether just because someone's come up with a really cool way of doing something you know like handstand yoga but their particular brand of handstand yoga you know i'm just making it up but yoga stand probably shouldn't be on the activity list because it's just they've just made it up and perhaps handstand yoga or some generic term that encompasses that and other brands that might come along is is more appropriate so there's a there's a kind of there's a lot of kind of in, interesting because the developments in the activity list are some of them are just things that have been missed but because the activity list itself is based on a lot of existing sport catalog lists it's it's also um uh types of things that get missed are things like that um and therefore having this using this forum for that conversation potentially is a different it's just, it's just a different audience and different set of concerns and so the reason for having it as a separate committee 
uh, is that, it, it, you know, there's a clear accountability for the list and it's very, you know, specifically around that list. Um, potentially there are issues in terms of how the actions came out of that committee and process and things like that. I, I've only heard, I wasn't part of it myself, um, but there's, um, there's definitely something to pick up around process if we did want to continue with the current approach, because I think the, uh, I think there were some challenges there, but I'm not sure that they were challenges with where the conversation was happening. Um, I, I suspect those challenges would, would have existed wherever the conversation happened, if that makes sense. Okay, um, I've, I've shared in the chat um, a Google sheet that Chris has uh, collected for me, or put together, which has the activity list here, uh, our activity list, and I think, yeah, so we have this concern or, and, you know, um, something to think about where we have trademarked um, items in a in an open list, which, which uh, and then otherwise we have uh, a list used by Sport England, and this is used to track. Um, these are the categories used in the active live survey. So this is where they understand uh, participation and outcomes. Uh, moving communities, they use these information, I think, or these categories to um, to monitor. Um, participation and that turnstile data. So there is, you know, there's, there's some work to um, to understand how these all co coordinate. So if I can just, I'll, I'll pause for a minute, I'll stop talking. Is, does anyone else have any thoughts around, around this? So we've had it's okay, but it's a little bit slow to update um, from Tom. We had Need to reflect those wider voices from Nick, if that's a, a fair, neat summary. Any other thoughts? I think those two specific things are fairly conflicting, aren't they, in terms of more voices and um, speed? But I agreed. I think there's nothing wrong with the um, the, the discussion and the, and the way it's dealt with. Um, it seems logical, but yeah. Um, if there's a way in which there can kind of provisionally be exceptions on in the short term that, that can be, I guess, reviewed every time. Because like my understanding is that that group meets once a month and that is often canceled and things like that. So when on the other side of things, if you've got someone who's like makes a logical um, request that is blocking their activities being published as open data. And I've had scenarios where I've waited like months and that that's just they've just had a bad experience of open active in that scenario so yeah just keen to to try and have some sort of keep the discussion but not create friction from from moving things forward am i correct in thinking that the that there isn't actually a requirement when you're publishing data to use one of the items from the open active list no there, there currently is uh, okay you have to, yeah, either this or the facility list, facility types list. Oh, facility types. Oh, so that's how we got around things like space hire and stuff, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah, facility, exactly. I think there was a conversation uh, in this forum uh, a few months ago, which is um, which has been published. I checked that, that was one of the ones that was um, the video was was um, uh, retrieved and and published because yeah. um, a couple of videos were lost so that um, and, and the conversation was basically the activity list is not suitable for um, the facilities uh, use case uh, because you've got 300 whatever it is I can't remember how many there are lots of activities and with spaces you don't have that many types of spaces we don't need an aqua yoga um, space you need a yeah. swimming pool um, and therefore that's the difference yeah Okay, that makes sense. I've just had um, an electrician start drilling in my house, so the, <laughs> this this session of the W three C is going to come to a noisy conclusion, I think. Anyway, um, so there's a link there to the document. I will put that in the slides if anyone has any has any further thoughts. Um, so Chris, I, you had, 
you'd come up with a kind of a handful of questions around the kind of if we think about quality with our data quality hats on looking at the activity there's some things around inconsistencies of mapping some duplications um those kind of things um so i'm just trying to think of the way forward here um they were they were kind of happy with the idea of you know positive about the idea of greater consistency um in the use of activity lists uh a lot of the other ones the ones they use were derived from ours so it could be this just another kind of case of um the, the grouping or hierarchy different broader terms narrower terms that kind of things that might allow um a lightweight but convenient and robust mapping um i think i still have a a question mark around the uh the kind of the use of trademarked names and whether they the trademark variations on on a normal activity for want of a better expression yeah whether they fit on, on that sorry howard sorry. yeah i was just going to say on that yeah just kind of reminded me yeah, that, that like the activity list is pretty good aside from group exercise which is um completely hard to manage because it's either when you provide the end user experience it's either group exercise which doesn't kind of make that much sense or it's a uh, triple x combo 2020 20 or something and you're like it's not use it's not helpful for the for the user so it's trying to maybe understand that side of things um within the hierarchy yeah and with, with regards to group exercise obviously the emd uk had a big hand in the original list um in terms of making sure that their, their stuff was covered off because that's probably where the most complexity is really in group x everyone else kind of gets on with it um and so the group exercise stuff um the trademark decision was something i'm not i i'm not sure if this is written down anywhere i kind of hope it is um but certainly there was a there was a kind of rule of thumb used for when trademarks go in the list a good, a good example here is zumba people specifically want to find zumba but zumba is itself trademarked and so if you if you had a no trademark rule and a consumer was looking for zumba you know you might have a confused consumer and we probably all agree that zumba is popular enough to warrant a consumer searching and finding it and so there is a line somewhere between you know zumba is on one side as i mentioned um earlier you've got you know handstand yoga yoga stand that someone just made up and trademarked yesterday and they've got one session running in the whole country um that we probably don't want on the list and the list to date has been kind of trying to find that middle ground where sessions that are trademarked and consumers are likely to search for um i'm not sure if the decision was made based on things like you know the google search um analytics on on particular terms how popular they are in, in general search that would seem sensible to me but other things like that or whether it was more emd saying, saying based on their experience and what they what they see in the market these things are what's more popular might well have been the latter um but that certainly is is the idea behind it so i imagine that this kind of conversation and anything that chris uncovers in in terms of double checking the mapping would be really useful to go into if there was an activity list committee you know reconvening maybe checking everyone still they've in the same jobs they were in before are still keen to attend because i'm sure the world's moved on since the last meeting um you know it might, it might well be that you know the, that's good input into that discussion and i'm sure there would be uh, some good debates to have around hierarchy and things like that. Um, and I hope you'd be able to get Jade back in there or someone from previous discussions who was behind a lot of that hierarchy decision, because obviously rearranging things um, has has consequences for the users. So, and deleting things is problematic. So, yeah, that's um, that's good to know. I think. Um, um, I think you know it's it's not necessarily a case of um there's a no trademark rule it's about understanding the decisions and if there was something you know a rule of thumb if we can be clear about that when it comes to speeding up that process of getting something in or off the list um we can be that's that's was my kind of ambition there not to rule things out because yeah. 
the trademark. And, and writing it down, like you say, Howard, so that the, next, the future people know. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. so, yeah, cheers, everyone. Um, so, thank you very much. Um, sorry, Howard. Howard, sorry. <laughs> I just was sorry. I know we've overrun. I just wanted to quickly just add just on the activity list. So, I have undertaken a review of the activity list, not just that Stephen, sorry, I know you said you've got to go um, if you need to. Um, cheers, <laughs> yeah, cheers, but uh, you can watch it back. Um, but no, as I said, I've undertaken the review of the activity list, not just from a data quality side of things, but also from a processes side of things as well, because uh, during the investigation, you know, it was pointed out, look, it just takes a long time for activities to be added for whatever reason. So I have, you know, put a paper together um, and I think maybe in the, it's, you know, we're, we're too close to Christmas now. There's no point of potentially restarting it now, but whether it's a new committee that comes together that you know or it's the old committee back together I don't know but I think that needs to be started again more than looking at the data quality side of things is that we look at the processes we try and speed that up we shouldn't be waiting two to three to four months however long it currently is to add an activity it, it, it shouldn't be that much of a complex process so the aim is to restart that in the new year get a new committee going or the present one the current one um, get that process streamlined and then once we start looking at that then i can start looking at the data quality side of things i mean just for instance very you know very very briefly you know there's we've got on the activity list running machine as one activity and treadmill as another now to me unless someone can say no they are two different things i would think a running machine and a treadmill is the same thing personally um but it's those kind of things yeah i know i know yeah it's, it's one of those things isn't it nick um but yeah there's it, those little things that that do stand out um, but I think let's get the processes streamlined first of all, and then we can move on to looking at data quality. That's all I just wanted to add. So just at the end there, Howard, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Um, um, as you're adding on add-ons, um, Howard, if you're able to pull from your work all the unique activities that are currently in use, um, that might be a helpful in, input into Chris's analysis there, because um, what if running machine and treadmill are never used in the data, kind of a bit of a moot point to an extent we can probably be a bit more easy about changing them or whatever else it might be but if there's things that are heavily used that, that that's something else to consider um so it might be that's that will help guide the focus of where the important conversations are you know where where all data is might help okay brilliant thank you very much i'm gonna have to call a hold there um but thanks everyone for the, some good discussions there really really helpful and some clear ways forward i think for our you know, wrapping up the kind of draft data quality reporting um which is the first round which we'll share to get some ideas before we kind of move forward so um thank you all very much uh, do we any other business and is it worth having a meeting on 21st of december or is everyone going to be christmas ready we'll be off by that point yeah that's fine so i think we will reconvene in the new year but uh so all of us everyone if i don't speak to you before have a great christmas thanks all bye, -bye. and everyone else bye bye, bye. 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 See you.